It's the last stop, right? All right, guys, we are here in beautiful Everett at Black Valley Farm where we are meeting the owner, Elena, and her intern, Joe Caprizzi, and she will give you all the details on Cooney Cooney Pigs and why we are here when she's not a veteran. Wait, wait, wait. Can you hold on a second, though? What? Blake, can we introduce Alfie, or is it Alfalfa? Alfalfa. Alfalfa, Alfalfa. 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 yeah, so yeah, Alfalfa yeah, 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 is the true star, and there he Alfalfa. is. <laughs> look at that little Star cutie. Yeah. Oh, give me a kiss. Oh, 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 thank you, Leo. All right. Yeah, yeah, All right. yeah. Let's so here we here. are in the greenhouse, and here we find Joe and Elena. Hi, guys. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. All right. So, Elena, question. Why are we here when you're not a veteran? Because I currently employ veterans through the Troops to Tractors program. Like... This guy. Who are you? <laughs> yeah, hey. So I'm Joe. Uh, I've been in the U.S. Army Reserves for six years now. I have 12 years of total military service, and I continue to drill. Um, awesome. I'm employed as an intern under the Troops Tractors Program, which is an alternative way of using my GI Bill to go ahead and put me back on par with the power curve and uh, get me into okay. agriculture without any major breaks or disruptions in my earning potential. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, he's yes, currently the really only is. intern in the state of yeah. Pennsylvania. So um, you're the only intern in PA. Yeah. I know. I am. Hold on, we're gonna switch everybody oh. around here so you can actually see their faces. There yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we actually right. did an event this fall to raise awareness for the program. Yeah, and tell us about that. What was that? Um, Veterans in the Valley. It was the first one of its kind in the state, and we teamed up with the Pennsylvania Veterans Farming Project. Mm -hmm and we brought in recruiters from all over the state of Pennsylvania and we had I think about 350 people show up so it was wow. well received we had what is it a dozen veteran vendors uh in it, was, ag, it was so more yeah it was more than that, that. and um sheriff our newly elected sheriff Emmerich actually yeah, he was, here. was came in and uh was so excited about it that he actually made it part of a centerpiece for his campaign efforts and was elected awesome. and yeah, so we're cool. super excited about that because it was all about building community ties and bringing veterans into contact with the community because yeah. as our community becomes smaller um just people become less aware of right of what we do and how we do it and elena you've been at this Growing pigs for 10 years. Yep, for 10 years. And you just started Troops to Tractors last year? Yes, last year was the first year that we had an intern. Um, it took, I'm going to say, close to a year. We worked with the Board of Education and then with Mimi Thomas Broker to get our education plan approved and all the documentation in place. And why did you decide to go with veterans and not just regular folk? Um, well, agriculture is definitely a career that you have to love. It can't just be side cash because it gets tedious. It's hard work. It's all season. There's no summers off. There's hot, cold weather. Um, so I wanted someone, I needed someone who would want to come and learn the field, not just work in it. So okay. when you have an employee that wants to transition into a career in your field, it's a completely different vibe than somebody that just wants weekend cash. Awesome. Cool. That's a good answer. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's actually a really good answer. Yeah. Right, right. So, so one of the things that we've been covering a lot today, or a reoccurring theme, is how one veteran helps another veteran, uh, one small business helps another mm -hmm. small business. Um, so maybe not a whole spoiler alert, you know, or, or but Joe, yes. t tell us about after your internship here, um, what happens with you? Where, where, where do you transition into? How, how do you splash then back into outside of, of this? So... Uh, I am actually going to get a professional certificate okay. as a result of having an education plan in place. So there would be opportunities for me to transition into uh, more conventional agricultural positions if I wanted to. However, uh, this is a really good fit. Uh, Elena and I have found that we work well together and we share a lot of the same goals. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to be partnering moving forward um, in uh, just a lot of ways. and. I'll help build her revenue stream and she'll help build my revenue stream because we have complementary skill sets and kind of our weaknesses overlap. And I think when you're a small producer, that's where the sweet spot is for veterans and for programs like this because it gives you the on-the-job experience. Um, you're not going to 
learn the lessons you need to know unless you're out doing it every day. You can't go and you can't go to Penn State and get an agricultural sciences degree or whatever else it is these days and just like pop onto the farm and take on hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt and expect to be successful because there's always going to be something you don't know. And here I learn those things and I build on them. And so not only do I develop the skills to be successful in agriculture, I develop the skills needed to be a partner with somebody else and to find uh, the resources, the partnerships and the community oriented approach that just lets you jump right in with both feet. And like we saw with veterans in the valley, most of the veterans that are transitioning into agriculture are transitioning in at the cottage level yep. industry, so not the big commercial industry. Yep. So is, is the experience you've had with Joe what you expected? Were you expecting to find someone who you wanted to train to be more of a long-term partner, or were you just looking for work and it transitioned into... Um, I would say when we started, like I had worked with him in the past just really briefly before he deployed for a year, so I knew as far as an employee what I was getting. Um, I, I had it in the back of my head that it could transition into more because he's from here, I'm from here, my business kind of hit a plateau where I need another set of hands if I want to grow. Okay. So it's not, it's going to be more than a one-man show moving forward. Okay. So, yeah, it was there in the background, but definitely not, like, the plan from the beginning. Okay, so th 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 let me narrate this really quick one more time. Let me translate it for a bunch of different folks, right? So, you're not a veteran. No. You're a veteran. Mm -hmm. You became an educational program. Yeah. Through the state that you're certified to then be able to help out veterans, not only just understand how to farm, how, how to work in agriculture, but the business side behind it. Exactly. As, as well as involved. So, so the, did you ever see yourself as a business owner in this? Uh, no, honestly, until until this opportunity was brought to my attention, um, I had thought about more the, of the sustainability and the self-sufficiency. But this is something that I had been looking for without knowing I was looking for it. Um, you know, I've, I've been in search of a lifelong career pretty much since I joined the military. And this is the first thing that really just fit together as, and I think it's the same thing for a lot of veterans. You just find your niche and you find something that you're motivated to do, a lifestyle that you want to pursue as a career. And that's really what this is. Like, no, until, until I worked with Elena, I would not say that I sat down and thought, I'm going to go ahead and be a farmer. Um, right. But then once Your life that goal was, wasn't yeah. to be yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you touched on something really, yeah. really important there. Is that it's not, it's never, we never look for jobs. We're looking for a lifestyle. Because That's right. being in the military is a lifestyle. Yes. Right. You Absolutely. just happen to do certain things that day. Absolutely. And so that transition is isn't always easy no but then finding that niche is mm -hmm. really important and that's a big part of farming is uh that that segues really nicely coming from the military just for other veterans that aren't aware of this one of the things you don't understand is the rush you get until you're done with it a lot of veterans don't understand the rush they got from doing something different every day mm -hmm. okay you don't show up to work you do not do the same job every day you actively solve problems. You're actively engaged at a level that most careers cannot provide. Um, farming does provide that. You, you are always solving problems. You're never doing the same thing twice. And you're always learning new lessons and reviewing them and trying to seek out better ways to do things based on what you've done before. And that is something that and that presents itself in a lot of these I mean, really, that's, Elena, you can speak to this too, but that's entrepreneurship in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether yeah, you're right? farming yeah. or yeah. you have a movie theater or you're doing R&D engineering, <laughs> yeah. you're always, it's always a different puzzle every day. Like I say, it's always putting fires mm -hmm. out. But like, yes, said, <laughs> exactly, 100%. All fires. Yeah, but like you said, it is a lifestyle. Yeah. So yeah. just for me as an employer to be able to understand, like Joe went to mm -hmm. BLC in July and he was gone for a month. You know, it was supposed to be two weeks, but it was four weeks. So just being able to roll with that mm -hmm. and compensate and allow him to maintain two different sets sure. of lifestyles, like, I don't think I could have done that as just a regular employer that has, like, nine to five mm -hmm. hours. No. Like, farming's 24-7, 365. Right. And to bring that back around full circle, too, that's something that 
a lot of veterans do end up in entrepreneurship on various levels. Uh, I think you guys were with Ryan Decker today in town. Uh, we didn't end up connecting with him, no? but that was the yeah. plan. We might try in a minute, but... Well, so, we I, you know, that, that's, that's just another... <laughs> which is... <laughs> which is... Hey, that's a we life. still love you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's just, like, a lot of veterans... A disproportionately high number of veterans do end up becoming entrepreneurs, and I think that that ties back into everything we've been saying with, with the lifestyle issues, the problem solving, and just the motivation to go out and do something unique every day. Um, so I do think that's worth mentioning. Okay. Yeah, discipline in nothing but solving the problem. That's the right. The only thing that matters now. That's correct. Right. And Elena, if someone wants to help support you, support veterans, how do they do that? Um, actually, they wouldn't come to me. They would go to the Pennsylvania Veteran Farming Project, which okay. they have a Facebook page and a website, and they can support the program there directly. Awesome. Yeah, so they could sponsor interns and just get involved. Mimi's the person they want to talk to. Mimi's yeah. the lady. Mimi Thomas Mimi. Broker, yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of head of all that. <laughs> Mimi, Mimi, that, that, yep. that's who it is. Okay. That's right. But if somebody wanted to purchase any products from you, Absolutely. What, what, what do you sell here? Because we had this conversation, right? So what kind of, your agriculture, your farm, your, I see pigs, I see chickens, I see stuff. That's right. Tell the people about what, what is it that you actually do here. Because supporting, when people purchase goods off of you, right? they're really supporting Joe as well. Yes. And all the other programs that, that can operate, right? Mm -hmm. What they're really supporting is they're supporting small business and businesses that are lifestyles. So when I started, I started because I didn't want to go to work. I wanted to stay home with my kids. So I have four kids. I started when I just had two, but I wanted to be where my kids were. So I started with three pigs and I have a little bit over six acres. And it's basically just been a practice in how can I make a living off of six acres? All right. Yeah. yeah so, so two kids you started out with three pigs and That's now right. you have how many pigs now i lead the nation with one of the largest herds in the country one of the most decorated herds and we sell stock internationally did you hear that <laughs> did you hear that people <laughs> say that again <laughs> so we sell breeding stock nationally we're internationally known we're a decorated herd one of the largest in the country so the kuni kuni pigs is just something i stumbled across as a mother who was bored and it's literally morphed into the bread and butter of my operation. So from that misstep into a career that I wasn't even prepared for, we've turned into one of the leaders in the cottage farm industry. So taking a small acreage and literally making it tick with as many different facets as you can match into one small holding. So you're a national leader within this, or a world leader from, from what I'm, I'm getting here. And this is right out of southwestern Pennsylvania. That's right. Yes, yeah, so we've hosted events where we've drawn interest from over 13 states. We've had 13 states and Canada in attendance just to learn how to raise pasture pork. Wow. Pretty cool. This is really cool. Yeah. This is really, really cool. It's one of... with a Justin Timberlake haircut. <laughs> no way. Show us. Andrew, Andrew show us. Lead, lead, lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show go, us. Go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I don't, Timberlake like... Haircut chicken. That yes. is, yeah, that is I know. No, that's a Justin Timberlake. Okay. Oh, that is Justin Timberlake. You act like you're a farmer and everything. So first off, look at all these. They're very friendly. But where'd Justin Timberlake go? There it is. Can you see that in the back? It's got like a... It is Justin Timberlake. Oh, is that focusing right? But there we there go. There it is. I'm bringing sexy back. Yeah. See, he even jerks his head with it. He's... <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. I went all ADD on you guys. No, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> fine. This is actually no, one it's of all Joe's good. That's projects like that's right here. that's actually the reaction that we like. That is a you called it a Justin Timberlake no, chicken. No, that's, yeah. that's, like, the that's ADD unique reaction to you. Where, where you see what we're doing and you're like, oh my god, that is everything that just perfectly encapsulates why we do what we do and what we're trying to accomplish. Like get people excited about. Farming, show them that it doesn't have to be this miserable grind. Mm -hmm. That it can be awesome. That, it can, like, yeah, it can be exciting. You know, yeah, you, you can have just, Justin Timberlake yeah, chickens, right. exactly, yeah. and I mean, cute pigs and yeah. Ooh, fluffy pigs. dogs. Yes. Can, yeah. can, can we walk down Absolutely. and see some pigs? Here, you, you go yeah, take yeah, yeah. the pigs. All right, all right, all right. We're going Absolutely. on a walk. Sure. We're leaving the barn or all the right. greenhouse. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. My farm lingo isn't on point right now. I apologize to all our viewers. <laughs> uh -huh. 
but we are leaving the greenhouse. Alfie is leading the way. Leading the way. He just booked it out the fence. He must be a combat engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and we are in the open air farm. So we got mini chicken coop. Outstanding garden. Outstanding garden, according to Joe. He may or may not have a part in that. <laughs> Absolutely. And we got some more chickens. Hold on, we'll find a whole bunch more chickens. Chickens at the farm. Black Valley Farm for those of you who weren't paying attention. Or just joined us. Or just joined us. Hold on. Uh oh. Yes. Chickens are going to the butcher tomorrow, people. So we apologize, but that's where they're headed. Or go get some fresh chicken. <laughs> All right. So which kind of, uh, yeah. We're going to take. Let's go down here. Oh, we have gotten close to the pig. The ducks are running. Don't touch your back. They're literally called runners. <laughs> Andrew, that truck and wire is high. Alfie's chasing the duck. Yeah, <laughs> Andrew, this is limbo. Okay. There we go. The lesson and we learned was we have made it line. to the pig. Baby bacon. Oh, they're singing. They're like feeding. Yes, oh. Oh. It they seems are like they're hungry. They're <laughs> 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 awesome. <laughs> This is the cutest bacon I've ever seen. <laughs> That's right. Pork can be really good going. Yeah, that one. Alright guys, that was Black Valley Farm. We are out of here. We will see you guys in a little bit. We're going to try and get Vin Zeal to talk. So say we goodbye, Elena. We will get him to talk. We will get him. <laughs> yeah, we will get him. Alright, bye. Closing message.